Hello everybody, this is Cybertron John, and uh, yeah, it's been a while. I've been kind of busy. This year I'm going to be doing another uh, top 10 uh, best purchases and uh, gifted items, but uh, I'm going to do it with a couple of rules. So um, obviously a lot of this is going to be more to do with more of the stuff that I've purchased myself. Um... It's going to include convention stuff, uh, anything outside of that as well that I've reviewed. Uh, and then there's one or two gifted items that I've I've got throughout the year um, from uh, members in my family. But, um, yeah, and then there are going to be also a couple of honourable mentions for... Figures that did not make the list for specific reasons. Start this list off at number 10. We have Transformers Legacy Evolution Lyo Convoy or uh, Leo Prime uh, as stated on his box. So um, he's at number 10 simply because... Um, it's really, I think it's a really good, uh, good character. It obviously takes a bit of the transformation engineering from uh, his original uh, Japanese toy to do with uh, how the arms and stuff work. Um, definitely been some inspiration from the original design, I'd say, um, in terms of how to situate certain things. And then they've taken the, um, taken it basically to the next level with. Uh, better articulation, and um, also um, just how we do engineering these days, because, I mean, you, you got that really nice cartoon silhouette to him, um, but yeah, um, it doesn't, you know, but it also does that kind of uh, feeling of uh, how the original was. It's not as weighty, obviously the original one would be bigger, but it's still got that blocky square type bod type feel uh, to him whilst being also uh, too accurate to the anime um, really and then he's obviously he's got a matrix he's got he's got a little matrix so you know that's got to count for something uh, a little bit of unspray in there but you know that's got to count for something right uh um and then, obviously, the multitude of gimmicks he can do. You got the over-the-shoulder main blasters here. Um, you got blasters that he can pop in through his arms there. Uh, you can hold them in his hands. Or he can have them in the back there like a jetpack. There's there's quite a bit of playability to this figure. Um, and, uh, yeah... But, uh, he stands here, uh, just because there happens to be probably more rarer and infamous figures on this list. But yeah, number 10, Lyle Convoy. At number 9, uh, I would probably say that this is, this will probably be even more, uh, I guess, of a sought-after item, I would say, than, uh, Lyle Convoy. At number 9... Lexi Evolution Prime Universe Leader Class Skyquake. So, um, obviously, everyone who knows about the original uh, Prime uh, Robots in Disguise subline um, Skyquake uh, knows that uh, it was really difficult to find, limited in quantity, and is fairly sought after on the aftermarket today. Um, this is obviously in bigger quantity than that, um, but yeah, it is a really good leader class, quite solid. Um, I mean, you can get an ab crunch out of him, uh, through mistransformation. Um, he's even got his little edge on sword. But yeah, and then also the fact that, um, you've got some Easter eggs as well, which are quite cool to do with the original Euro G2 Skyquake, 
which I also own, uh, which I did. I did show off some of the um, the connections to this one and that one in the video review that I did. But yeah, I mean, as a leader, it does quite. I think it does quite a bit. It's got a really cool transformation, um, and the articulation is really expressive, uh, just making this a really ambitious figure, I would say. Uh, shoulder pads are sometimes a bit of a pain, I would probably say, to kind of, like, deal with. But, I mean, he's really chunky, heavy-duty, and just, yeah, feels like he deserves to be at the leader class, um, and, uh, yeah... Uh, obviously, uh, a spot on my list. So, yeah, number nine, mm. Skyquake. At number eight, we're going to be going a little smaller. Um, and, yeah, I had to have one of the core class Dinobots on here. So, here we go. Lexi Evolution Core Class Grimlock. Number three in the Dinobots, uh, for combining into Volcanicus. Um, yeah, uh, <laughs> I was unfortunate, um, I know that I may have seen in my videos that, um, I was gonna be able to get all three, all six, and, uh, do a combining Volcanicus video did not happen as, uh, within 48 hours of the, the other three, uh, being released in the second half of this year, uh, they just got sold out in pre-order, so, um, clearly, uh, they were much, much superiorly designed to the previous half of the team, uh, and became quite popular, um, quite quickly for a core class combiner team, obviously, um, but yeah, Grimlock is on this list just because I, yeah, he's a cute Grimlock, I think, I think he's quite cool, um, Definitely, um, definitely, I think, could have been, I think his limb mode, uh, for combined mode could have been done better, uh, honestly, um, but he's got a pretty, I think he's got a pretty nice, uh, robot mode, he's got an okay dino mode, he's pretty alright, uh, you can get some okay, okay posing with him, you got the butterfly and stuff like that, which, uh, you don't get on really, um, Really small figures, more more the high end stuff, um, but yeah, um, a really nice little core class uh, Dinobot. Yeah, number eight, core class Grimlock. Okay, and at number seven, um, we've got a animated universe figure. Uh, so at number seven, it's gonna be Legacy Evolution. Deluxe class animated universe Prowl. So this is the first animated universe figure that we got this year out the gate. And I think the design is pretty good. Um I I mean it does uh, a lot of stuff with um has a lot of stuff in common in terms of the accessories and how they work, uh such as how the original toys uh shurikens worked. Um, obviously, clearly, they're trying to find a way to, um, create that balance between G1 and, um, animated. Obviously, we got the animated style body here with a bit of a chunky build from the G1 aesthetic. But they've gone kind of a little heavily G1, uh, G1-ified with the head, really. Given, um, that they've really stepped their game up with the Bumpy and Optimus Prime... Uh, which are being released in 2024. Um, I think we don't really have much to worry about with the future of um, how the G1 uh, type treatment to the animated designs are going to be, because I think they've really upped their game uh, like they did with the Prime Universe stuff. I think he's quite cool for what he is. He's got pretty decent articulation. Uh, you can kind of get a, a little ab crunch click out of him as well. And he's got some, uh, he's got some decent posing that he can do as well, uh, with him. And, um, he's kind of got a really cool futuristic, uh, motorcycle mode as well. So, um, 
Yeah, but unfortunately the shurikens don't work as well as they could do just because the gears grind against each other and it's just, I think it's poor design really. So uh, he could have been much higher up on this list, I think. And it's just um, how those shurikens were um, done in terms of the quality control uh, that has really let him down. Legacy, Evolution, Animated Universe, Prowl. At number seven. So at number six, uh, before we reach half time with this top ten, um, it is going to be a TF Nation um, purchase. Generation one uh, reissue of Frenzy, or as I prefer to say, uh, Rumble in blue. Uh, so... Yeah, um, it's G1, so, I mean, I can't really complain, um, this is an absolute joy to kind of behold, uh, spring-loaded head, you know, chrome guns, uh, that he can hold, he can hold in his hand, uh, weirdly, um, and then, given that it's a reissue, uh, you'd think they skimp out on quite a bit of the metal and there'd be more more plastic. But I think he's got as much metal as the original. Because he's got metal here, metal in there, and then he's got his metal toes. And uh, most of the reissues these days, uh, in the last ten years or so, just have the metal feet. so And the rest is plastic. Um, so... I think I'm quite I'm quite surprised by that. He's quite enjoyable. Um I think he's gonna go pretty well with my um with my Soundwave, my G1 reissue Soundwave, uh the Toys R Us exclusive one, which uh that was also a TF Nation uh purchase, uh oddly enough. Obviously the reissues uh G1 is quite um quite rare. Original Rumble goes for um or Frenzy. Um, I think they both go for, uh, a little bit of money, uh, on the aftermarket, on eBay and stuff like that. So, um, getting a reissue that could be, uh, less and more affordable, uh, is obviously, uh, better than nothing, really. Number six, Generation 1 reissue, Rumble. Okay, so it's, uh... Kind of like halfway through the list at the moment, um, and so I, I guess I should probably talk about um, 3D printing. Uh, I don't actually have anything that I've 3D printed this year, so unfortunately um, I don't have anything that I can show uh, on this list. But I can say about um, the situation with the Omega Supreme project. Um, currently it's on the back burner. I've not actually done, um, not actually done any further work on it at the moment. Uh, I'm in the process of reverse engineering some STL files. Um, I'm on the second one, I think it is. I've done pretty good progress on that. I just got to get some of the little details in and then it's pretty much ready to kind of continue, uh, redesigning, uh, cutting, sculpting, and stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, um, this stuff does take quite a bit of time. Uh, obviously, if you're in the CAD world, uh, you end up being in your own little world for uh, quite a bit of time. Uh, that's like I um, I've seen videos that have been posted about him. I have not watched them because I want to not be uh, given a different uh, bias opinion. I don't want to be... <laughs> Um, driven by someone else's opinion from another video. I am still going to review him. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> but it is really sad and disappointing that it is the UK that have had to kind of, UK collectors have had to kind of like be let down by uh, the distribution problems that, um, that we've got. It's not Hasbro's fault um, really. I think it's probably an issue that is outside of Hasbro's uh, control. 
disappointing to know that we're the ones that have had to suffer for it and uh, we've had to kind of watch on as the rest of the world has got it and is getting to enjoy it and we're yet uh, unable to enjoy um, this really um, rare item um, that will not really be uh, manufactured again. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I hope it's going to be worth the wait, and I hope I do not get any QC issues. I really hope. So, we're going to be heading into the uh, second half of this list, the last five uh, on this list, uh, plus some honorable mentions. Um, and uh, starting off here at number five, it's going to be Commander Class Legacy Evolution Armada Universe Optimus Prime. Uh, he's quite big. Yeah, he's quite big. <laughs> he's out of frame. Oh, no. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm going to get the camera up a bit. There we go. He's on this list um, here because um, I think he's got, you know, he is like... Um, He's better than the original. Uh, obviously, the original will be kind of like sought after for its reasons of uh, it's nostalgic, it's gimmick based. Uh, but this guy kind of um, retains a lot of his uh, gimmickry, uh, gimmick stuff with the super mode and stuff like that. It's just a shame that there wasn't the budget there for any minicons. I would say, as an improvement, I think he could just do with minicon ports, really. There's not much else I would improve about this figure. And also, given the fact that um, he is now in the Transformers Hall of Fame as the best Legacy Evolution uh, Transformer this year. Uh, which, um, that's saying something. That's saying that Hasbro is really, uh, you know, they did their job with this figure. They did their job. They really delivered. At number five, Armada Universe Commander Class Optimus Prime. At number four, we've got another animated universe figure. Um, this is also an exclusive, uh, to the multi-pack from Buzzworthy Bumby this year. Uh, for Legacy, and it is the Animated Universe Auto Trooper. So, uh, yeah, um, obviously, uh, he is at the point of where he is, because uh, this is going to become a figure that is going to be, I guess, sought after on the aftermarket, so it's going to go for a little bit more than uh, what you probably want to pay for. Um, as it's an exclusive, it's the only way to really get the Animated Universe Auto Trooper with the Legacy treatment. Uh, but I would say that it's going to be cheaper than buying yourself a BotCon attendee exclusive Auto Trooper, because those go for loads. Uh, as we know from anyone, uh, who, um, searches for anything done by fun publications, uh, from BotCon... Um, but yeah, um, obviously very typical that it was going to be, uh, the Siege Ironhide, uh, and Ratchet mold that it was going to be designed from, uh, as, uh, really, but also kind of cool knowing, uh, about the fact that you can switch out your animated head for a Kiss Player head for your Auto Trooper. So, um, and actually, first instance of the Auto Trooper, and, uh, I would say it's probably even rarer to even try and find a Kiss Players Auto Trooper on eBay or anywhere, really. But yeah, I mean, this, for that, you know, it's really, really cool, and, um, yeah, I mean, design just does it for me as well. Um, and, uh, it'll make a really fine addition to, uh, my, uh, legacy animated, uh, universe type collection, and, uh, yeah, uh, really fits in. But yeah, at number four, it is the animated universe auto trooper. So, at number three, it is going to be another TF Nation, 
um, item. And this time uh, it is an item from uh, Toy Fu. Uh, so, um, yeah. Uh, it is Transformers Armada Thrust. Power Links Thrust. Um, and yeah, this is, this is a rare thrust, uh, really. I'm just gonna quickly take him to the robot mode, but yeah. Uh, it is a rare thrust, so, um, you know, I mean, I've seen how much, how much it goes for, and obviously Armada is 20, uh, it's 20 years old by this point, so... Anything, uh, anything that was, like, uh, exclusively painted, uh, obviously, at 20 years old by this point, would go for some, uh, seriously good money. Uh, also given the fact that it's a gimmick, whoa, it's a gimmick-based, uh, toy line, um, and stuff. It's one of those kind of, like, um, early 2000s, uh, obscurity repaint, uh, reissue type stuff, so, um, where they tried to g one um, Armada designs and stuff like that, so, um, and those, I mean, quite rare to, to even, uh, happen, uh, back then. At number three is Armada Power Links so, the final two. What could be even rarer than anything on this list? So, um, this is actually uh, one of the items on this list that um, I got gifted to me. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it's, um, I would say it's something that a lot of people don't really know about, but um, the... But, uh, yeah, depending on which one you buy will depend on the affordability of, I guess, what you want to have it. Um, so, yeah, um, this is Transformers Alternators Prototype Hound Roll Bar um, Swindle, I'd, I'd say. <laughs> But yeah, um, this is a really, really rare item. Um, I treat this like a proper collector-based piece, really. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's got a lot of the stuff that I like from its era. It's got good plastic, nice chrome, rubber tires, and it's back when you had shocks. You could have shocks on rubber tires. Prototypes are quite rare uh, in the fact that the one that you get may be the only one, the only kind of paint deco of um, of that prototype because they do many prototypes, obviously, uh, so that they can uh, try and get the colors, uh, the tooling, and they got to work stuff out on the sprues and stuff. Um, and that's kind of like part and parcel of uh, taking the I guess these days taking the CAD render into real, uh, into real life in the factory and how you gonna manufacture it really, uh, which is why certain changes happen. Um, there's a lot of people out there who don't know about prototypes that you can get prototypes, uh, really, but yeah, it is a really, really, um, lovely piece and, um, well, what could be more infamous uh, I would say, or saw after, than a prototype on this list. What could possibly be? At the moment, and we're going to go into some honorable mentions before we get to number one on this list. So, um, first of all, in honorable mentions, Armada Universe leader Megatron. So... He is in honorable mentions because, um, well, um, I think, uh, he's obviously got some hindrance, uh, with his turret, um, and also, um, I would have liked to have seen more of his kind of gimmick-based type features, 
um, carried over from the original toy. Um, and obviously we now know more about um, the fact that he can combine with Tidal Wave. So that's kind of cool that they managed to retain that kind of value uh, there so that you can play with him with the Super Mode Optimus Prime and stuff like that. Um, but also, again, the lack of Minicom ports. Uh, and so, it you know, it kind of just felt like there's so much stuff where it's like, you know, that could have been done to make it more fun and stuff like that. But I get that they're going for more cartoon accurate and display. But would, would it have really hurt anyone for them to try and put a little bit more fun by putting some of those hidden features into it? You know? But yeah, that is why, for me, he did not make this list. Also in honorable mentions is the... um. Japanese cassettes um, that came with the reissue Frenzy uh, from my TF Nation purchase. Uh, this is the combined mode of Decibel, and you can see one of my one of my gripes as to why it's not it w would not possibly make the list, and that is because he can't even hold himself up in combined mode. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna pop him on the floor, um, but. Um, yeah, uh, that's probably the biggest reason, uh, why, uh, it's on honorable mentions and has not really made, uh, the list here properly, uh, but obviously you got the rub symbols, the chrome, so, I mean, I love kind of G1 vintage stuff, and there's nothing cooler than a Japanese mail away, uh, cassette. Uh, combined team, really, uh, in my in my regard. But yeah, just unfortunate about that quality control, really, that's left it um, feeling like it couldn't really make my top 10 list. And finally on the list also is the Marvel Comics Universe um, Jaxis... Um, G2 uh, type trooper builder uh, soldier army thing from Buzzworthy Bumblebee uh, troop builder multi pack. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know, I don't really have any connection to this, so I would say uh, that's why it's not really um, on my list properly. But I will say that I think the colors kind of work here. It really does fit better uh, with this design uh, than uh, the Skull Grin. And um, yeah, um, that's kind of like my positives about it, but still did not make the list. Okay, so number one on this list, and probably my most precious figure in my collection that I will ever have, probably, is Transformers Generation 1 Super God Master Force Overlord. And uh, you can see that I've uh, managed to collect a couple of pieces. So uh, there were a couple of pieces here that I got gifted. So. Uh, the building of this figure is absolutely real right now uh, in kind of trying to bring it to its um, former glory um, before it was opened um, at its styrene casing. And I've also uh, managed to get a really nice peachy sticker sheet for um, its uh, restoration <laughs> as well. Uh, because I'm going to take some of these stickers off because they some of them look alright, some of them don't. But yeah, definitely need some TLC. Um, I've got the new tank calf, so you got the cockpit piece here, the purple repair arm in there, uh, which it was broken in the previous one, and then I've got one of these as well, so uh, feels feels more filled out and just, you know, giving it more color, really. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this guy is really, really expensive on the aftermarket. Um, 
could run you uh, in a box between 600 and over a thousand pounds, uh, really, depending on whether you're after the Japanese one in the box or the European one in the box, uh, really. Um, and then the way to tell the differences is uh, the purples. Uh, shades of purple, that's the way that you can tell the difference. Uh, really, uh, the purple on Japanese figures stays much vibrant. Uh, the purple on the Hasbro figures, uh, yellow and really fades in saturation uh, over time. Uh, and just looks disgusting, really, I think, to look at. Just saps the life out of it, really, I think. Uh, which is why I was more convinced on trying to get the Japanese version, which uh, this is. But yeah, um, I absolutely love love this figure. This is obviously number one. I couldn't put any other figure as number one for me uh, this year for my best purchases or gifted of this year. Uh, and um, came from Toy Fu, no less, at TF Nation which uh, kind of adds a stronger sentiment to it, as uh, I know that my money has gone towards a charitable cause, and um, I have got my holy grail for my collection. Um, so, everybody wins. Yeah, this has been Cybertron John with the top 10 best purchases of or gifted Transformers for me of this year. I um, hope you enjoyed my list. This was obviously based off a personal preference uh, of what I have purchased this year. Uh, you may not have the same... Um, you may not feel the same about this list, but uh, I hope everyone had a good Christmas and a Happy New Year to you all. And we can only look forward to what is going to be in store for Transformers for 2024, because it is good. It is really good. Um, and we can only hope that 2024 in Transformers United uh, is going to be even better than Transformers Evolution this year. This has been Cybertron John. Peace out.